Alrighty, today I will be showing you how I personally use Blender. Now, there may be things wrong that I do, there may be things that I don't know people didn't know about, who knows? But everyone has their own preferences, but this is how I use Blender. Okay, so part one is going to be making the model. So, when you load in, you're going to have some up here and something down here, and you're going to have your cube. So, you're best off, I mean, I do it, is press A, press X, and press delete. Okay, boom, gone. Now, on the left hand side, we have some tabs. And we're going to use the one that says create if it hasn't shown up already. And you want to press a cube. So here you can get your plane, your cube, your circle, blah, blah, blah. But we want the cube. Now, unfortunately, it's not where I want it. So this grid here is what I call the ground. And as you can see, the ground goes right through the cube. Phew? That is the word. So this is fine if you're going to build under the ground. So if you're gonna have a building that's on a hill in Omsi, then this is a perfect way of doing it. But to start off with, it's not, in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is just go to File and go to User Preferences, because default, the mouse is set to select with the right button. Well, I like to use the left button. I want you to not save user settings. Okay, so with the right button, I'm going to go to the corner of the box of the cube and just right click. It may be left click if you haven't changed it. Okay, so I'm gonna press N and this brings up a new menu. Now looking at dimensions, that's not in meters. So for meters, we need to go from the cube to the right and I get this little bar of icons up here. So you want to press the third one in. It's got a circle and a tube. Press that, go down to length and it says imperial. I always change it to metric. And now in the dimension box, and the location of transform it in meters. Okay, so that's selected. My little cursor is on the corner. So I'm gonna go down to object, transform, origin to 3D cursor, and then go back up to this menu. Now see where it says Z minus 1.0011. Yours might be different. Click that, press zero, enter and is now raised the cube. Now I can't see any of the grid underneath. So I'm gonna get it at just a little angle like so. Right click on the edge and do the process again. Object, transform, origin to 3D cursor. Go up, press zero and that should. Nope, this happens a few times. It is supposed to go up to so I can see the grid. I might not be on the line enough. Right, so it's going to be one of these where you take so long doing it. And that's saying now that that is on center, but it's not. Okay, so G, Z, I'm just gonna um, hold shift and just move it up slightly. There we go. Okay, so there's my cube on the ground. That bit's over and done with. So next, I need to make the dimensions. Now for this, I'm just gonna make them up. Um, but a useful tool is Googly Maps. So if I go to Googly Maps, uh, uh, that's where I live. So let's just go here. And if we go to, say, Liftmore Road, I don't know what's here. Ah, 
houses. Right, perfect. So if I go into satellite view and I zoom in, and I wanted to build, say, this house. Now up here, the image isn't very good. Um, so I find a corner, right click, measure distance. Go to the other corner, right click, distance to here. And that's telling me that that's 14.51 meters. I don't know how accurate this is, but it gives you an idea. And then, of course, you do the same with uh, the width. Now, I don't move this. I could, but I tend not to. I always do it from scratch. So that's quite handy. So for this, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to go across here to dimensions. Now, on the Y axis, I'm going to have... Oh, hang on a minute. Why am I not in the center? There we go. Sorry. And now in the center, by going up to back here where we put zero, and I put everything at zero. I don't know why I was not in the, in the right place, but there we go. So let me just go and do transform 3D cursor and two. Hmm. Still down a little bit. So click on there. There we go, that's what we want. Okay, so. Right, let's do the next step. So in dimensions, I'm going to work on the y-axis. Now that's the green one, which you can see in the bottom corner here on the left hand side. So you've got your y, green, x, red, z, blue. Of course, there's your arrows here. So I'm gonna put the y-axis at six. Now you can write m or cm if you want centimeters, I normally just write six, and it will do it at six meters. Then what I do, hold my mouse wheel and hold shift, I can move it around, and just hold the mouse wheel, I can then rotate around the, around the object. So now I want the X axis, which is the red one. So I'm gonna make that as seven meters. Okay, now the Z axis, now I, was given the tip that every level in a house, so you've got your ground level, your first level, your second level, is roughly around two and a half meters. So this is gonna have two levels. So I'm gonna set this at five meters, okay? And then you should have a big square shape like this. So next thing, I'm quite happy with my dimensions. I'm going to press Ctrl and A, bring up this box and select Rotation and Scale. Nothing happened. Well, if you press Tab and go into Edit Mode, and if you scroll down on the menu that you can bring up with N, and go down to Length, tick that, and as you can see, we have our measurements on the cube. Now, if you don't press Control in A, and you go straight into edit mode with tab, you have this size box, but the measurements will be two meters by two meters still. Which we don't want that. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the measurements on. And the first thing I need to do is work out the roof. So I'm gonna turn it around slightly, and I'm gonna press Control and R, and then move my mouse to the bottom edge. Now, it doesn't matter if you go to the top edge or bottom edge. If you want to hit the other way, just make sure you go on the edge and watch where the purple line is. This is the loop cut. Okay, so I'm gonna use this to mark out the center of the roof. Now, this is dead center, 3.5 meters either side. Now, with this, you can move it to the measurement you want. If you make a mistake, press escape, and it goes back to where it was, and then click. If you need to move it, okay, so if we move it along the X axis, you can press G, 
and as you can see it moves but if you press X it locks it to the X axis and then you can move it to the measurements that you want they can be seen at the bottom and the top and to move it on the Y again it's G and Y to lock it onto the Y axis so you can make a nice little arrow but I don't want that okay so down here I'm going to click edge select now if you're not sure what things are hover your mouse over them and it will tell you what they are so I'm on edge select I'm going to select the top edge now I want to move this on the Z axis so if I press G and then Z I can go up and I'll say I want my roof roughly around there and click it and then press A that's my basic house shape perfect so now what I'm going to do is I need to mark out the doors and the windows so control R again and I'm going to place it in the center of this side because this is the front of the house and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag so there's about a meter from the edge now as you can see I, I can only get to 0.999 or 1.02 so I'm going to keep it at 1.02 okay now I'm going to press on the numpad which is the set of numbers at the side of the rest of the keyboard and I'm going to press the button that's between 0 and the enter button which is dot or del so press that and it will zoom you right in so I'm now going to hold my mouse wheel in move around then zoom out a little bit now I can see it's green so I want the Y axis so I'm going to press G and Y hold shift move it to the right boom one meter exactly so that isn't really going to help much so I can't put a door there so I need to make another loop cut so have your cursor over here on the big section press ctrl R down to the line click hold shift and then move it along now doors according to Google are roughly 80 centimeters by 2 meters so if I get on to 80.2 click G and Y hold shift and I can get dead on 80 so that's the width of a door so hold mouth wheel mouse wheel in not mouth wheel mouse wheel in I'm going to turn it around slightly and hold shift and just move it into view now I'm going to press ctrl R again and this time I'm going to go onto the side click hold shift and I'm going to move down to 2 meters and I can either go 2.01 or 1.99 so let's go to 1.99 press the Dell button again on the numpad spin it round press G and Z because we want it to go up 2 meters and press an A that is now my door marked out ok so windows control and R for a loop cut I'm going to go about 75 centimeters from the ground so press G and Z or Z whichever we pronounce it to 75 now because we're edge select we can collect oh, collect select this edge here and we can see it's 1.25 meters sounds good to me because as windows normally line with the top of the door so I'm going to press A and deselect that I'm control R again make another loop cut and this time I'm going to go about a meter away from the door again I can't get there so G and Y because I'm on the green axis shift and move my mouse to one meter control R again and go to one meter from the other edge and that one was perfect and then press A to deselect so already we have our door and we have our window markings so 
the upstairs. What do we do with the upstairs? Well, control R. And if we say, what, 75 again? Then that'll be enough, about 75. Click it there, G and Z, and then press shift and move your mouse down to 75. So this one here is 1.25 meters. So have your cursor up here, control and R, click, and then put that to exactly the same. So 1.2, hold and shift, 1.25. Yep, same measurement, and they are in line with each other. And we've also got a little window here. So if this house is to have stairs that goes up here, round, or from back here, go up, up here, you've got a nice stair landing. Or if they go straight up, it could be a nice bathroom. Who knows? Okay, so that is the front of my house done, and the back is exactly the same. Now the sides, however, oh, these are all different. So I'm gonna go to Vertis, vertex select vertices okay so i know that this line here is 75 centimeters if you're not sure you can always go back to edge select click the edge and it says 75 centimeters this one however is 1.02 meters so vertex select i'm going to select that vertex g and z hold shift and bring that down to 75 Perfect. Edge select, press this one, 1.25, well, 1.95. Now you could possibly select to all these and bring it down. So if I try that, so 1.25 1 1 for this. Perfect. Okay, press A to deselect. So click on the next edge, that's 75, that's 102. So vertex select G and Z and down to 75 centimeters. 75.1. So press the Dell on the numpad. Zoom out a little bit. G and Z. Bring your hold shift, bring your mouse down to 75. So of course, edge select, press this 1.25. That's 1.96. Vertex select, select this one, G and Z, and down to 1.25. Again, this is how I do it, and there's probably someone out there who knows how to do it better. Now the thing is, I haven't done this side, which I colored on by pressing this vertex, spin around with your mouse wheel held in, press on that one, and then do your G and your Z to bring it down. But me, well, you know, it's just me. So I'm gonna bring this one to 75. Bring this down to 1.25. Oh, that's too far. Bring this down to 75. And then this down to 1.25. Again, G and Z. Okay, so the house is exactly the same at the sides and the front and back. Now, some houses with OMSI, they have the windows and doors on both sides. So we're gonna work on that one and the size is exactly the same. Now, sometimes at the side of the house, you do get a window. So I'm gonna control R with my cursor this side. And I'm gonna bring it in. If it lets me, no, I clicked. There we go, clicked once. I'm gonna bring it in, let's say 75 for this one. So click there. Dell button, with a full stop. There's more point, that's the one. Uh, G and X, because I'm on the red line now, and just bring it into 75. Put my cursor onto this side, press Control and R, Again, we're going to move it along the X axis to 75 again. 
perfect. So there's going to be a window here, door here and a window here on the ground floor and then the same on the first floor. Now unfortunately my thing has gone wrong It's because I am silly and I clicked too many times. If it does that, just control Z and then it will put it back to, because you don't want the roof to move at all. So G X to 75, which is just that perfect Mondo. So that's all the markings now done for the house. But it looks too well. It just looks too flat. So I'm gonna go on to the face select. Okay, now how I think about things are, so I'm sure I've been told this, if it's gonna be at the side of a road, even if it's got a little garden, obviously you want some detail. So I could do the windows by clicking and then hold shift and clicking the rest of the windows. Obviously not these ones because that's not gonna work. Zoom in with your mouse wheel a little bit. Press an E, hold shift, and then just drag it out. So you're pushing the windows in. And then if you press tab to go object mode, you can see how it looks. And tab to go back into edit mode. Now the door, so let, let's, let's do this with the other windows as well around the back. Uh, what did I put those into? I can't remember. So we'll zoom in and go to the bottom ledge. 7.5 centimeters. Okay. So I hold shift to select these, make sure nothing else is selected. And then I want to push them back 7.5 centimeters. So press E, hold shift. And just to the left of my mouse, you can see the measurements in centimeters. Oh, that's too much. Okay, so leaving them selected, I'm going to press G and X because I'm on the, the red line and bring it out slowly. Oh, 7.49. Okay, press decimal button, zoom in, G and X, A slight touch of the mouse. Oh, it's 5.5. Five. Come on. Come on. Apparently, if you type it, 7.25. Oh, no, that's not worked. Okay. Apparently, you can type it. Right, so I'm going to control Z everything. I'm just going to go E, X. And because I'm closer, I should be able to get to the same. Come on, come on. I'm holding shift. Why are you going so fast? Oh, come on, you silly little thing. Okay, 7.51. <laughs> yeah, so you might point one out, but it would do. Okay, so the door and the windows at the side. So if you go to edge select, we want to select the edge that you want to get rid of for the door. Hold shift and select the middle one for the windows on all sides. So that one and that one. Okay. Because they're going to get in the way. So if you press X and dissolve edges, it then takes them away. And now face select. We can now shift click these no, not them ones but I don't do that yet see this is what takes me so long to make a building because I always mess up with the keys okay so on the Y axis so E and Y hold shift and we can take these in to okay 7.51 for those and this side shift and click 
E and we want the green so it's white again and it will move the mouse Ooh, 7.51 <laughs> okay and then the door we can go to the door and do the same for the door but this time we want the X axis so just move it inwards to about five centimeters and then the same with the back oh that's my stomach right there we go so press tab object mode and there's your windows all laid out okay so back into edit mode what i am going to do now is go to edge select now the thing with omni buildings you've got to think about poly count so at the top, just here, you've got Tris, and it says 380. To me, we can get that lower. It's always best to try and get that number as low as possible. So because we've extruded the windows and doors, we can now select all the edges around them. Again, this is my method of doing this. Not everyone does the same method. And I'm gonna go keep going around the whole build. Good job, it's just a basic build and not like a big supermarket or hospital flipping it. Okay, I'm gonna select every single one. And then onto the roof. Now, if you do have a lot of edges, then you can press C, and C will bring up a circle. Now, I've always set some sort of press shift, it deselects, but if I just hold it, it will select the edges, and then press escape to come out of that. Okay, so that's all the edges selected. Yeah, that would do. Okay, so I'm now gonna press X, and then dissolve edges. Now you'll see some have stayed behind. These are needed for these parts. So press A, that's fine because once everything's all sorted, we won't see them. And the roof is now clear. So I'm gonna go to face select, click, shift click the roof, okay. Decimal point, just raise down a bit. I'm gonna press E. Now, because I've got the purple line that just came up, so if you look about here, purple line is there, it's already locked to the Z axis. So hold shift, and I'm gonna go up about 10 centimeters. There. And then what I'm going to do then is go around to here. On the sides here and I'm going to press E and Y because we're on the Y axis and I'm going to bring that out exactly the same 10 centimeters Ooh, perfect okay press A to deselect now I'm going to go on to this side and do the same as well so we are on the green, so E and Y. And holding shift and drag it out to 10 centimeters. And the reason why I've done that is because I can grab this bit here, that bit here, and that bit by holding shift. And I can go to E and X from the X axis now and move that to 10 centimeters. And there we go. Right, now, to bring it down to an angle, I do, I've played around so many times. I've pressed G and Z. Oh, there you go, G and Z, look. <laughs> G and Z. Uh, maybe 11, see how that looks. Yep, G and Z the whole lot, and it comes down 
at an angle. Well, that's the first time that's actually worked for me. So shift click these ones, and again, we're on the red axis, so E and X out to 10 centimeters. And then G and Z, and I'm gonna bring that line down, these lines here to 11 centimeters, and that's, by pressing tab, I can see now we have the guttering area. Now, unfortunately, when I started taking all the edges away, it was down and now it's gone back to 404. So what we can do then is edge select and we can highlight the edges that doing the roof has caused. So by shift clicking them all, Uh, I'm going to leave this one because that can obviously it's a different it's going to be a different material so I'm just going to shift click them all now at this point if the measurements do get in your way while well, trying to find the edges you can always turn off the length just here Sometimes I just work around them. And there's one there. So hopefully, by pressing X, dissolve edges. Oh, I missed one up here, so I'm gonna have to control and Z that. Uh, I might have to leave them ones in. So I'm going to have to leave the top ones in because I do want this as a separate material um, to the roof. I don't know why that was selected. Maybe that was the problem. Let me just find out. See, if something goes wrong, you can always play back with things. Nope. So let's deselect those and deselect that one. X dissolve edges. There we go. And of course we've got this one here that I forgot about. Because we don't need that, they are not important. I'm not really getting rid of them, we're just dissolving them. That then looks perfect. So that's almost ready for texturing. All we should do now is of course, face select, press C, and get rid of the faces underneath. Escape. X, now we can click faces. And that's gone. And by the doors, we have one underneath. Shift click, other one. X, faces, and there we go. We've now got it down to 332. So there's obviously more, like around the door frames. Keep checking window frames door frames for any edges that you can dissolve. Right, there's one here. So shift and click that one and that one. There's one up there. There's one there. Oh no not that one. That one. No. That one. There we go. So that's fine there. And then there's two more on the door. And dissolve. So that's now down to 300. I mean again you can try and take these out but I doubt it they will come out because we've already tried that in the first place. And that is our basic house build. Woo! Hmm. I wonder if I see any of these on some OMSI maps. <laughs> So there we go, that is part one complete. That is a basic blender build. Again, my methods are, could be different to everyone else's. There could be an easier way, much quicker way than mine, but this is what works for me. And like everyone who uses Blender, it's user preference. Well, I hope you enjoyed making uh, the house. 
uh, or any building you're actually going to make. And then part two will be about the texturing on how I was taught recently. And I'm going to ta taught, teach you guys, hopefully. So there we go. Anyway, well, thanks for watching and have fun.